What's up, what's up leaders? Scott Matthew here from Nix Your Limits and man, have I got a good one for you today. We are interviewing on the podcast here, Dalton Green. Dalton is from Kentucky and currently is the outgoing executive officer for DECA. All right, so DECA is an organization that prepares the emerging leaders and entrepreneurs of tomorrow and he is the central region vice president. And so we actually get into that in this interview, but he represents a lot of students from around the nation, specifically in that central region. Um, but he is the man. He has had an incredible journey of student leadership. He got involved with DECA back in eighth grade and jumped right in just to saying yes to opportunities in chapter leadership and region opportunities, being a state officer, and then on to the executive level, which means the national organization. And so he's got big plans for his next steps. He's gonna head to the University of Louisville, uh, where he is going into accounting and English. Uh, he's, he's gonna be the best tax lawyer all around, all right? I'm probably gonna hire him one day. <laughs> but he is awesome, he's got great goals. He works with DECA, but also org other organizations. He's super involved with the uh, uh, Rotary Club, um, especially working with building the, that organization up across the entire state of Kentucky. Super cool, such good stuff from him. Um, I love being able to sit down with him. And so check this out, all right? Get ready, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you like this so that we can spread this message to so many more but let's jump in and see what Dalton Green has to share with us today. Dalton, I am so excited to have you. How are you feeling? How are you doing? I'm feeling awesome. Thank you for having me, Scott. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to share my story, a little bit about myself uh, with all the amazing leaders out there. Awesome, man. I know uh, so many, there's going to be so much good stuff coming from this. And so I'm excited to dive into it. But Dalton, I always love to hear this as I'm, as I'm interviewing students, just like, Give me some of the, like, what are the, some of the things, like, give me a couple quick lists of, like, what are some things you're glad you did that have helped you get to where you're at? Like, the opportunities you have right now, headed off to the University of Louisville, like, what, what are you glad you did? Well, you know, looking back, uh, there's a lot of things that I did that I'm glad I did, and at the time, you know, it didn't even cross my mind that I needed to be doing this, uh, but, you know, to me, I was always adaptable. Uh, I started in the eighth grade uh, joining CTSOs, Career and Technical Student Organizations, like DECA. Uh, and that's really where my journey began was in that eighth grade classroom saying, yeah, I want to join DECA. Uh, just being open-minded, not having a clue in the world what it was, but saying, that's something I want to do. Uh, so I hopped in, uh, went off did my eighth grade career, went to our international conference that year as an eighth grader, uh, then went off into high school. And that's when a lot of the opportunities really started to open up to me, uh, not only within DECA, but within other organizations uh, and other extracurriculars, such as, you know, golf. I was a golf member and just being able to work with a team and you know, that was something I never really thought of. Uh, I wasn't a big athlete, but being able to golf and have that team to fall back on uh, was something really important to me. But, you know, just keeping that open mindset throughout that entire journey, uh, I was able to find internships. Um, I was able to join another service organization uh, at the local uh, community called Rotary. I know Rotary is a big deal. A lot of you may know what Rotary is, and I was able to get closely involved with them. I'm actually wearing my Rotary jacket today, got my pin on. Um, and, and, you know, their, their theme this year is something that I'd like to bring up. It's Rotary Connects the World. Uh, and, and that's something, you know, with leaders, uh, leaders connect the world. And that's what Rotary is made up of. That's what DEC is made up of. And all of these other student organizations were just made up of amazing leaders. Uh, so just, you know, my journey has been very unique uh, working with these organizations and just keeping that open mind has been something that has been very beneficial to me. I love it, man. I love that. And that, that reminds me of a phrase that I often have said, of just like, just say yes. Like that's always been encouragement that I give to students a lot. Just like, just say yes. What, mm -hmm. you know, roll that back all the way to eighth grade. Like what helped you say yes, other than just kind of that feeling of like keep an open mind 
but like what helped you say yes and then keep saying yes? Like as an eighth grader, I'm sure it was intimidating to say you went to the international conference. So ICBC as an eighth grader of like, why'd you still say yes to that? So that, that could be kind of scary. So dive into that a little bit for me. Exactly. Uh, so, you know, in the eighth grade, especially uh, at, at my school, you know, we were a small community. Uh, there weren't a lot of opportunities, uh, but DECA was one that presented itself. Uh, and it was a way for me to go do something, get out of the small town, uh, meet with like-minded individuals, uh, and on, on a much broader, larger scale. Uh, so, you know, that was simple to say yes to, to be able to say, oh yeah, I'm going to, pack up my bags and I'm going to go compete in a DECA event in Orlando, Florida and go to Disney World for a week uh, and miss school. That was very simple to say yes to. Uh, but, you know, as, as the years went on moving out of eighth grade, you know, I think things started to build upon each other. Uh, that made it just easier and easier for me to say yes because those results started to show uh, for me, you know, growing personally as a leader. Uh, I could see those differences within myself, being able to talk with people, build those connections uh, for the future. Uh, you know, I, I was fortunate enough all through high school uh, as a DECA competitor to make it to the international conference each year, uh, moving position to position throughout Kentucky DECA uh, from a chapter officer to a regional officer to a state officer where I was able to represent all of Kentucky uh, my junior and senior years of high school. And, you know, I have to give a lot of credit to those two, two years in my, to my, I guess I should say career <laughs> to this point, um, because those two have been the most transformational years of my life, uh, especially saying yes to opportunities. Um, because once I was put into that position of being able to represent the entire state, the entire Commonwealth of Kentucky, it was something that was, you know, it changed my mind. It changed my viewpoint because at that point, I'm not just representing myself. I'm not just making these opportunities for myself, but I'm able to, to provide these opportunities to schools that may not have a DECA chapter yet, getting them involved in DECA. And these new members uh, to, to allow them to attend these international conferences and meet and compete and be a part of something bigger than yourself, uh, which was, you know, that that's what puts a smile on my face is being able to to give this opportunity to other others uh, who were like me or who are like me. Uh, so, you know, that's something that makes saying yes easy is. You know, it is that self-satisfication that, you know, you can, you can look back and say, yeah, I was able to do that. Uh, I was able to make that difference. Uh, so it, it, it's, been, it's been unique. Um, but, you know, ever since I've taken on uh, this position as an executive officer for DECA, uh, as Central Region Vice President, uh, for those of you who don't know, I, I'm able to represent 13 associations or states uh, throughout the Midwest. I have the 12 states of the Midwest and then Kentucky. Uh, so it, it's something that was able to take this from that state level where Kentucky DECA had 2,000 members to this much larger scale where I'm representing, I don't know, approximately 60,000 members uh, from 13 states. So coming from a small town, my, from a graduating class of 120 to now being able to represent 60 plus thousand DECA members right out of high school, you know, it, it, it's something that makes saying yes easy. Love that. I love that, Dalton. And that, that just traces a really cool path of like small steps, right? From joining DECA in eighth grade to like getting involved as a chapter officer. Oh, then you find out about these regional positions. Well that seems kind of cool. And like, Oh, let me check that out. And then, Oh, state officer position national it, with the executive officer position, just that opportunity. And I can say that that's so true. I've seen that true for me okay. and so many students out there that by saying yes, the first time it opens up so many other opportunities that you can keep going. But the other thing that I love that I wanted to point out is 
you, it's just like you, you are such a good model for leadership. Like when, if you get into a position and you're only thinking about yourself, you're not a leader, but you've turned around consistently. You can see that. And I feel that from you of like stopping and saying, do you realize, like, I, I re represent thousands of people right now. Like this is a big deal and I need to make sure that I'm doing right. Like I need to make sure I'm, I'm doing my part to help provide them with similar opportunities so that they can say yes to that as well. That's super cool, man. That's super cool. But throughout that journey, I know there's so many things that limit us, right? Like so many things will try to hold us back. And a lot of that might come from our own mindset. A lot of that come, might come from um, not knowing how to do things or, or just we mess up the first few times, right? But we got to be able to push through that. And I know as part of this niche your limits type of a mantra, uh, your mindset, habits, and action are what can push you through and help you get through that. And I know I've seen that true in, in you and from hearing your example as well. And so let's talk mindset. Let's talk when times were rough, because it couldn't have all been beautiful and easy, right? When times were rough, what, what did you have to keep telling yourself to have a positive attitude or to keep going so you would say yes again? Like, what, what, tell me about your mindset, the mindset of Dalton Green that helped you get where you are. Well, you know, there, there's different ways I can take this, uh, but I kind of want to split this up into two parts, really. Uh, one from a leader aspect and uh, one from, you know, a personal slash member aspect, uh, because I feel like I do uh, lead two different sorts of lives. Uh, you know, I've got my personal life and then that that leadership style life uh so as as a leader you know uh i'll start out there there there's always going to be some kind of block in the road that you're going to have to overcome uh, and i most definitely have had to experience that um from from things as small as zoom calls uh not having an attendance um to not having interaction on social media. You know, these are small things uh, to big things I've had to experience, such as conferences being canceled, whether state conferences, regional conferences, or our international conference. But the thing that the mindset that you have to keep in these situations or that I've had to personally keep in these situations are you're not over because of that one little thing, you know, just keep thinking, what can I do next? Uh, and, and personally, for me, a lot of times that's reaching out to those that you're representing uh, as a leader, getting input. If you're representing a small group, make sure that you're talking to everyone in that small group. If you're a leader of a large group, make sure you have some sort of forum, whether it's with subgroups uh, within that, that community of, uh, that you're representing. But make sure you know how you can overcome that situation. Um, and, and personally, you know, it's having to keep that open mind, knowing that what you have done leading up to that event or that roadblock has made a difference and that you are doing good. Uh, this one thing is not going to hold you back. People aren't going to remember you for the one bad thing. You know, they're going to remember you for the tens and hundreds of good things that you've done for them. Um, but, but more on, on a personal level, uh, the, the mindset that I've had to overcome, uh, I've had to have when overcoming obstacles, you know, whether it's uh, not being able to do something, not being able to go to an event uh, because of uh, my leadership life. That, that's kind of where I see these two blurring together. Uh, is because you know, as a leader, you you have to you have to take a step back, you know, in your personal life because you're making a commitment to others to lead them. Uh, so you you kind of have to take a step back from your personal life. Um, but I think um, the the mindset that I've had to keep again would be that open mind, uh, but staying involved too, um, especially with my personal life. Um, staying involved, getting involved with other things uh, outside of just one organization. Um, so everyone knows that I'm very involved with DECA. Uh, but something, you know, to keep my mind off of DECA at times is because I would just be engulfed completely if I didn't allow my brain to do other things, uh, is I've been able to get involved with Rotary International. 
Uh, so, you know, that's, that's kind of that way to, to keep my mind open to other things uh, because DECA won't last forever. Uh, but, you know, I can make a lasting impact in more than one areas. Definitely. Definitely. I love that. I love that. A couple things that I pulled from that and, and totally agree with just like what's next, right? Like something goes wrong, like, okay, it went wrong. And like, you can, you can find out like what happened, how can we prevent it for next time? But, but what's my next step? Cause I still got to keep moving and mm. like tomorrow's still going to come. And so what's next? Like, what can we do? Mm -hmm. And so I love, I love that type of attitude. And I know that that's so true. I've seen that for me as well. Like stuff goes wrong, but like, what can you control and act on that? And like the other piece of like, you know, understanding the more you want to grow and serve, especially in leadership, that means you're giving up a little bit of your personal agenda, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, you're sacrificing being able to watch everything on Netflix and only some things <laughs> because you're spending more time serving the people that you're trying to serve, but it's worth it, right? Like I, I, I feel like I can feel that from you, but just speak to that. Like, is it worth it giving up a little bit of just personal stuff to get out there and serve in leadership positions? Do you feel like that's worth it? 110 percent uh now now don't make any mistake i do watch my fair share of netflix <laughs> but but no um it, it's you know i feel like it changes from person to person you you have to find out what level of leadership is right for you uh and, and you do get back and just like anything in life with le leadership you get back what you put in uh i've seen it from many leaders, I've, I've been very fortunate. I'm 19 years old, but I've been able to work with leaders of all ages from all over the country. And I've seen good leaders, I've seen bad leaders. And that's one thing that I can most definitely attest to is you get back what you put in tenfold. Uh, so, you know, personally, I've, I've always been an energetic, very involved kind of leader, or at least I've tried to be. Uh, and, and it's just been very uh, beneficial to me and, and I've been able to see my progress uh, working as a leader and whatever role it is, whether we're talking about that chapter officer role when I was uh, a freshman in high school at 14 years old as an awkward little kid or, or now still just an awkward 19 year old. So, um, <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, it's different and it, it's, all about how you look at it um, and and I have been fortunate to take on this larger leadership position uh, but it is so worth it uh, to be able to take that next step as a leader and be able to represent your peers um, and and that's for anyone listening you know you may be a leader and not even know it you may be a leader within your group of friends uh, and, and that's something that you need to realize. And how can you make the right decisions for, you know, your friend group, maybe two or three of you. And maybe it's something as simple as deciding where you're going to eat tonight, you know. So just I don't I don't want to make make it sound like I believe that a leader is just someone who who is representing hundreds or thousands of people uh, because, you know, some of the best leaders I've seen out there didn't even know their potential. Totally, totally. You don't need a title to be able exactly. to be a leader, right? Like you don't have to have a position, a fancy name badge or anything like that. It might look cool, but hey, you have influence. And I, I really appreciate you saying that. So let's talk like a big part of leadership, a big part of success is consistency, right? So like suggest, you know, there's a lot of students out there that are like, man, I want to be like Dalton Green or like, I want to, I want to be able to get some success. What what habits helped you get to where you are or like what suggestions do you have? Like you got to be consistent. you got to have a habit of this. What are some important habits that students can remember? Well, I'll, I'll name two of them and then I'll kind of give some examples. Um, you know, for me, repetition, like you said, that consistency and then adaptability, being able to change to the situation, which is another little something that we talked about, uh, touched on just earlier. But, you know, for me, you know that you have to, um, you have to take on situations uh, that, you know, you don't realize at the time may be as beneficial as they are. 
uh, like we were saying, just say yes uh, to these opportunities. Um, I was able to take on an internship uh, knowing that it, it was a job, really. It was 40 hours a week, uh, my senior year of high school, and there was very little pay. But I was good friends with with who who was in uh, who owned the business, um, and I knew that if I took on this internship, what I would get back from it would be amazing. The connections, the networks, the future, just from pushing through and having to go in every day, eight hours a day, with no very little pay. Um, And, and, you know, that's the situations that you find yourself in. But it it was that repetition of of going in, uh, being adaptable to what was at hand, uh, that that really allowed me to prevail in the end. Uh, But, but, you know, you find those situations over and over again. Uh, But, you know, it it comes down to those two, especially for me, is being adaptable and and repetition. You know, people are going to tell you no. A lot of people will tell you no, especially the first time. But, you know, Scott, if I keep coming to you asking you a question and you tell me no the first time, by the ninth or tenth time I come and ask you that same question, odds are you're going to cave in. So, (laughs) you know, that repetition is something that's very important or it has been in my life. Totally, man. Totally. Well, that's, that, that makes a lot of sense. And I, and I can see that for sure in, in terms of success. And I, I like, like today's work can be tomorrow's game. Like, no, like you got to put the work in, you got to, you, you got a crazy internship, a lot of hours, like not necessarily you're all of a sudden making tons of money or whatever, but you know that it's going to open up those opportunities for later. It's going to help you grow into the person you want to be, meet the people that you know you need to meet. Or if nothing else, just be able to practice those skills, those habits and everything like that. And so keeping that perspective in mind is, is awesome. And that I love this, like the habit of being adaptable, regularly thinking like, okay, am I, do I need to change it up a little bit? Do I need to uh, adjust a little bit to these things? And, and that's just, that's valuable, man. That's, that's really cool. Um, I like that. I like that. So tell me, tell me this, like give some, uh, as a student, you know, if, if they're out there right now, like what are some things that a student can do, say next school year, uh, they want to get more involved or they want to like, how, how can they get more involved? What, give us some advice of like what any student could do walking into school next school year. So as a student, you know, this, this is different. Um, and it's obviously how I've been able to make my journey, uh, possible. Find an organization or find an extracurricular activity that appeals to you. You know, for me, it was DECA in the business and marketing realm, but find what applies to you. It may be with FFA uh, in the ag field. It may be HOSA in the medical field or so on. Just find out what is important to you. Get involved with that organization. Just just go join on the member level if you're not already a member. Uh, But from there, you know, just stay active because you're a part of this organization now. And, and I think that's important to realize, or it, it really was for me, especially coming from a very small town, a very small high school. Uh, like I said, my graduating class was 123, one, two, three. Uh, so, you know, the, my peers, I don't think they realize that when they join these organizations, whether it's FFA or, or, Skills USA or DECA or FBLA or whatever it was, that they were a part of something that was much bigger than just our high school. You know, you're a part and you're representing something that is nation or nationwide or maybe even international with some of these organizations. Uh, So I'm not saying that when you first join this organization, especially going into the school year next year, that you're going to be working with people from, from opposite sides of the country or abroad, but you're now a part of that network. And if you want to, you can. Uh, So, you know, just get involved at the chapter level, go on, work your way up to the state level. Uh, And and this is most definitely something that you can do 
within the course of a year if you're a junior or a senior. I don't want to I don't want people to think, you know, I did start early. I did start in eighth grade. Uh, but but that's very unusual. Uh, so I, I know a lot of people, uh, especially within DECA, who started as sophomores and juniors and became state officers and were able to attend international conferences. And, uh, you know, that's something you just just put yourself out there because that's when opportunities will come to you is when you say, hey, I'm willing. Let's let's do something. Let's get involved. Uh, and, and you'll just see those opportunities present themselves to you. You don't have to be searching for them at that point. I love that. I love that. Um, being able to put yourself out there, say yes, right? I feel like that's our, that's our theme right there of like being able to take advantage of those opportunities, get out there and get involved. And so now, uh, Dalton, what I want us to end with, I, this is a super fun thing. When I go around and talk about Nick's Your Limits, I take, and, and many of you listeners may be familiar with these, I take these postcards take postcards around and I encourage students think about what's holding you back and uh, put that limit on there. And then at the end of today's session or the keynote or whatever it was that I did, throw it in the box on your way out and you're done with it. You're not going to let that thing hold you back anymore. Um, but then I keep those. They're all anonymous. I don't have them write their names on them, but I collect those. And actually what I want to have happen is Dalton, I'm going to share one with you and I want you to give some advice to this student and any other student out there that feels like this thing is holding them back. Are you game? You down for this? Absolutely. This sounds awesome. All right. So I pulled this one out of our stack. I don't know where it's from, but here's what it says. The fear of not being enough and messing up. So this student is, is not taking action, is not going after what they think they could because what's limiting them is the fear of not being enough and messing up. What advice do you have for this student, Dalton? Absolutely. So to whoever you are, they say the fear of messing up and not being enough. You know, you, you have to, uh, especially as a student leader, you just, you've got to roll with those punches because that's going to, there's going to be people out there that, that uh, are going to say you're not enough, that, that you're too young, that you're not smart enough, uh, that you can't do this. Get out there, prove them wrong, show them, yes, I can. You know, I've, I've most definitely been in situations where, where people are like, oh, he's young. You know, I went to an international conference as an eighth grader. I was 13 years old. Everyone else there's 17, 16. You know, I, I was a baby and I felt like a baby. But, you know, it, it was, I, I'm, I'm most definitely there. I had that fear of not being enough while I was there. But it was back here in the back of my mind, and I just didn't let it talk to me. You know, I just kept on fighting that thought. Uh, and, and eventually, you know, you overcome those fears. I feel like that's true with any fear as a leader, whether it's public speaking or interacting uh, with, with these thoughts that are saying, no, you're not enough. You can't do that. You've never done this before. You know, just fight through it because you are enough is the fact of the matter is you, you can do it. And if you want to, you will. Uh, so just let that thought go. Just keep fighting uh, because you got this. So <laughs> well said, I love it, man. I love it. Well, that's awesome. Uh, great advice there for whoever that student was, or Hey, if any of us, that's part of why I do this because a lot of us have similar things that limit us that hold us back. And for any of you, if you don't feel like this impacts you, just imagine if a student like this, can nix a limit like this, just imagine what you can do. You can be the next Dalton Green. You can be awesome, all that and more. But Dalton, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I know a lot of people got value. If you did, please reach out, let us know. Um, reach out, drop, drop some comments or, or share with us what, what you're thinking and, and share this with somebody. Somebody out there needs it. And it might be you or it could be somebody else. Like Dalton said, you could be a leader without having that title. So maybe if you influence somebody else by sharing this episode or something that you learned. Um, but we all have an opportunity to influence someone else every single day. And so Dalton, thank you so much for spending time with me. I appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, it's been awesome to share my story and a little bit about myself with everyone. You're welcome. Hey, everybody, get out there and nix your limits.